Hey everybody, uh, Carl here, and uh, once again we're going to continue on looking at our uh, Zenith uh, All-American 5 radio, and today uh, we're going to be looking at the Intermediate Frequency Amplifier. It's our, uh, it's our first real IF stage, and uh, we're going to be looking at the 12BA6 tube and that's going to be the tube that amplifies the signal and then we're going to send that into the second transformer and we'll take a little bit of a look at that and I want to show you something I kind of wanted to show you last time uh, but we can do it this time because uh, the two transformers pretty much work the same we have the uh, basically the same controls you know we can adjust it with the slug and that so but I kind of want to give you a little demonstration on what's happening with the transformer. I, and I hope you find that interesting. Uh, but I think the first thing we should do is, uh, well, let's look up the, the tube. I got my tube manual right here. And I've got my, uh, my loop de loops right here. So, because it really helps me to read, <laughs> believe it or not. Okay. We're going to look, now I'm looking at the 6, BA6, because the 6 and the 12 are the same, and it even says so in here. Uh, the 6, BA6, which, and we're using the 12, BA6. Uh, miniature types used as RF amplifiers, and that's what we're doing. Our intermediate frequency is, and it's still a radio frequency, it's just, it's been knocked down to one intermediate um, range that we can use, one frequency that we can use. Uh, used as an RF amplifiers in standard broadcast and FM receivers, as well as in wideband high frequency applications. And it talks about the low value of uh, the grid to plate capsules uh, is, is minimized and it minimizes regenerative effects. In other words, because it's not acting like a capacitor, it's not going to build up a lot and send off a signal, which is which could start it actually uh, feedbacking, you know, and creating a loop. So that the good thing about this tube, it's very low in that. So it'll just it'll just send the signal out. Okay. Now, uh, and down here at the bottom, it says. Twipe, type, twipe, type 12BA6 is identical with the type 6BA6 except for heater radians. And we, we seen that in our first tube. They, they work the same. It's just that this tube uses uh, a little higher voltage, a little higher heat uh, than, the, uh, than the 6 does. That's all. So, uh, like I told you before, if you don't have one of these uh, little books and you don't really want to order one, which they're, they're so nice to have though, just to have them in your hand, be able to look it up, you know, you don't have to mess around going online and all that stuff, or even you don't have to turn the computer on, you know. Uh, but if you want to, if that's what you like to do, and if you use your phone a lot and you just have all your stuff in your phone or, or your pad, uh, you, can, you can download this. And it's in uh, PDF form. And so you can read about your uh, any tube you're working on. Uh, just do it on, you know, do it with your computer, do it with your phone, do it with your pad, whatever you use. You can do it uh, instead of having to have the actual book. All right. So uh, uh, reading that, and we have like a lot of specs in here we could look at. Hey everybody. Uh, well. It seems like uh, my battery died. Can you imagine that? <laughs> but anyway, you know, what, what can you do? We're, uh, we're going to continue on. And we can do that because we have this artificial lighting. So, you know, no big deal. It's nighttime now. And um, because it's not only nighttime, but it is winter still, uh, the furnace is going. I've been sitting there waiting for it to cut off, and it it's not really helping matters, so I thought, you know, we're going to have to go with some of the noise. And I'm sorry, 
Uh, but, you know, that's the way it is. I don't have a studio that, you know, I use my little house here, my little trailer. <laughs> so anyway, where we we were just talking about uh, the uh, the t 6 or the 12 BA6, and we were going to look at uh, some of the specs that they're talking about. And I, I'm reading out of the RCA 2 manual. Now, I didn't want to go into the maximum ratings, and a lot of these we can look at later on uh, when we're actually in the radio, uh, you know, doing our thing when we're checking out voltages and all that. Right now, we're just looking at the basic circuit, getting an understanding uh, of how this radio works. Okay, so it says here uh, plate supply voltage, and it's got 90 or it's got 100 to 250 volts. Grid number three in the internal shield says that's connected to the cathode, and that's going to be the uh, suppressor grid. And we're going to look at that in a second when we uh, when we go to the whiteboard. Uh, same way with grid number two supply voltage will be 100 and 100 volts. Uh, the cathode bias resistor, uh, 68 ohms. And you'll see on the schematic, that's exactly what the uh, schematic calls for, which is pretty cool. And then it talks about plate resistance, uh, so on and so on. The plate current, uh, they want that. Oh, thank you, Furnace. Uh, they want that at uh, 10.8 to 11 uh, milliamps. We'll check that and see if that's right. And then it gives the current for, uh, let's see, plate current for grid number two is 4.4 to 4.2 milliamps. Uh, and so that's, that's basically what all we need for right now. Uh, like I said, the cool thing about that is the, uh, the ohms that the book calls for is what the schematic calls for. And let's see if I can, I can show you this here real quick. Uh, that's right here. And that's the, and, and, and I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll bring a, a schematic up, but I want to show you where it's at first. It's right here coming off of the cathode, okay? See that? It's coming off the cathode. And it, it calls for a 68 ohm resistor. I thought that was pretty cool. So uh let's uh let's go to the whiteboard and we'll kind of take a look at this tube. And we're just gonna we're gonna kind of brush through it. We've already been through one tube. We kind of know how they work. This one's even more simpler. That's the cool thing about this one. This one is even there's not as much going on with it. So um, it basically, what it's doing is it's amplifying the uh, the radio frequency, the intermediate radio frequency that we're going to maintain an, until we cut the frequency off, the radio frequency off, and just have the uh, audio. And, uh, you know, intermediate, that, that means, to, like, to go between. And what this does is this goes between what's coming in and then the audio that's going out. So we have our intermediate frequency that, and because it stays at 455 we can really control it, we can really fine-tune it and filter it and do all what we want with it which makes uh, uh, super heterodyne radios really cool. Okay so let's uh, let's go to the whiteboard. Alrighty, so here we have our 12 BA6. Now, if we were underneath the chassis and looking up, where well, we have our tube socket, we go, and because we're underneath, we count from 1 to 8, and we do it clockwise. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 7, 8. On here, you notice 1 is not used. 2, here, let me use the right side of the thing. 2 is the one half of the heater. Three 
is the suppressor grid and that's if you notice that's connected to the uh, the cathode it's part of the cathode uh, bias four is the control grid coming in five is the cathode itself six is the screen grid seven is the other side of the heater and eight is our plate now if you notice here T1 we just went over T1 and that signal now that's coming out of the secondary T1 is going into the control grid all right now the heater is going to heat up the cathode and it's going to want to start letting electrons loose well as the signal comes in and out this controls how the uh, electrons flow the screen grid is positively charged so it helps shoot them up but yet the suppression grid is is actually negative and it keeps the electrons once they get up here from coming back down and going all around it suppresses them to the plate now you got to remember that the tube doesn't actually look like this inside uh, you know when you look at a, a tube and you'll see it on uh, different videos they break them apart and and they're the parts are more round you know there it's it's inside it's not this so just keep that in mind now one thing you notice, and we'll look at the uh, uh, the schematic here again, that on the schematic we'll see the screen grid and the plate both have 94 uh, volts on them. And the reason is, this, is, this actually comes off here, goes through the coil, and comes back up to the plate again. And so they're sharing that voltage, okay? And going through that uh, that small coil, it, it stays pretty much the same. So that's what we're looking for. And we'll do that later on when we, uh, when we actually get inside and take uh, our measurements. You know, we'll see, are these really the same? And what's going on in the whole spiel with that? But I wanted to, that's the basics of it right here. And then uh, this is going off the plate. It gets what it's, uh, uh, you know, the electrons as they come in, up and down, up and down. Then that goes to out of the plate, and it goes in the T2. Now I want to show you something, uh, how these transformers, just to give you an example about a transformer and what's going on with it. Like I said, we already kind of covered transformers when we were looking at T1. T2 has basically the same controls as the uh, uh, the same stud that runs up, that runs to the top and the bottom, and uh, and you control it that way. So, uh, but I want to show you something here, and we're going to go to the bench now, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, let me let me flip over to the other camera. Now here I got the two coils. I got one here and I got one in front and I've got them. I got the first one hooked up to my signal generator. Okay. Now we're going to switch over and we're going to look at them on the oscilloscope. And you notice the bottom one, the bottom one is the one that's coming out of the signal generator. It's that one right there. Okay. Now the second coil is not connected in any way to the first coil. And I'm going to flip that on and we can see that at the top. That top one is the second coil. And it's not really doing anything. Uh, but if I adjust the signal generator I'm going to start turning it up. Let's see what happens. First of all, this goes, starts going way out of range. But now watch what happens. Okay, we can see a difference. We can see it's, as it grows. The second one 
it's picking something up. You can see it's actually picking it up, right? Now, these two coils are not adjusted to each other. They're just two wrap coils. One uh, has a lot of wrappings on it, the secondary, and the first one has very little compared to the second. I mean, it's, you know, the wraps are probably twice as much. So they're not in balance. And uh, so that's going to make a big difference. See, I can do several things with this coil. I can, I can put a slug in it. When I do, look what happens there. So, but they 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 interact with each other, and that's what happens to our our um, transformers, which is basically two coils in our radio. The first one has a signal, and the second one picks it up. Now the whole deal is they have to be wrapped pretty much the same. And they have to be in tune. That's when we adjust those slugs. We get them to where they, they it comes over with the best optimum signal that we can get. So, okay, let me switch this one off. And I'll go back to this one here. And let me swing it back down. There we go. Now let's see if we can get this out before the battery runs out and the furnace comes on again. So uh, that's basically I just some things I wanted to show you on this one. Now our next one is going to be really cool because that one is basically our diode tube. That's the one that uh, it it'll grab the uh, audio and it'll take off the. Uh, it will take off the radio frequency. It's the uh, detector. And we're going to look at that next time. So I hope this has been uh, helpful to you. Uh, please, if it has, uh, comment below. Let us know. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Uh, we would sure like to have you part of us here. Uh, if you hit that bell thing, I guess you get notifications. I, you know, I notice that on my subscription bar if I'm subscribed to somebody they're going to pop up there so okay everybody uh, that's it for right now I'm going to put this camera back on the the charger overnight so maybe next time I won't have you know interruptions and stuff until then everybody uh, be good uh, take care of yourselves and you know what be kind to everybody else because uh, we're all here together right okay uh, you're all great see you next time bye